I'm the current secretary of a body called Philometer. It's the Gaelic word for a tiller, steering device, uh, a stick. <laughs> uh, and um, the group was set up to look after the last of the surviving, the last surviving working example of this type of craft, a Scornishoch. And our policy has, has been really from the beginning that the best way to preserve that heritage is to keep the boats working and in use. And that's, that does seem to have proved that, that it works. Uh, they were built for longline fishing. Most of them were built in Port of Ness, in the north of the island. Uh, they, were, they were built for a commercial fishery and the, the type of boat was probably fully developed in the 1900s but the height of the fishing was the late 1900s to early 20th century. Most of the fish was exported, it was dried and exported, cod and ling. There was three main classes of boat. Um, the large one is, uh, the example you saw today is a recreation of that, and Sulara, she's 33 foot overall length. Um, the last surviving boat, Jubilee, is the, the red boat, is 27 foot long and the little boat you sailed is rigged in the same way as uh, what they called a half scaw. You had a scaw, three quarter scaw, a half scaw. The half scaw uh, is 18 foot. Um, all over the north of the island, not only in Ness but other townships like Tolsta, it, it was a main, you see there was very little um, earning most of the living in Lewis villages was subsistence. So this was a very rare opportunity to earn money. Really there was there was comparatively prosperous times at the height of that fishery. And then it really faded in the early 20th century. So about um, you know it ran almost up to the Second World War, you could say. Um, but Jubilee being one of the last to be built then became engined and was used as a commercial fishing boat and of course when a boat is kept in salt water it lasts much better than when the wind is blowing drying it out. She was built in 1935 and that's probably why she survived. She was one of the last to be built. Right. Um, most of these boats they had a very short life expectancy because they were dragged up and down beaches basically yeah. worked to death in about 10 years and um, sadly there wasn't a surviving example of the full-size boat but 20 years ago the son of the man who built most of them achieved his kind of life dream which was to build one of these big class boats right. and he was probably the last man with with enough information to do that um, so based on photographs models and um, the wreckage of the last ones I think uh, he, he, he made the type of boat that his father built it. It's, I, find it, I find it quite exciting, um, even though there were risks. Uh, I mean, the skills involved in working these boats in that area, uh, you know, I admire that very much. The, the technology isn't much changed from Viking times, really. I mean, the Vikings had uh, clinker boat building with clenched nails which is a, a form of construction that hasn't really been improved upon and in terms of technology that there haven't really been many advances it's been refined but it's still basically the same thing what I love about it is you've got a boat two sticks a piece of cloth and a few bits of string that's it but there's something else and that's that's practical and because uh, the rig depends on cooperation and watching each other. They are the best way of teaching teamwork I've ever come across. And visitors often say that this has been great for getting us to work together. Uh, so it's very rewarding when you've got people who might never have met, there might be only one other person who knows the bow. And to begin with, it looks impossible and complicated. And at the end of a day, the boat is sailing very nicely and people are smiling because they get such a pleasure from it. Well, you know, that's, that's a worthwhile thing, isn't it?
I think it's because the, 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 there is so little technology between you and the experience. You have to be aware of the wind and um, you know right away if it's not working, <laughs> you, know, you know. Whereas in a more modern boat, often, you know, you're cushioned a little bit by technology and you can have an auto helm on your chart plotter. Um, crossing open water in these boats is fascinating. You know, you calculate the tides. We do use a GPS, why not? Why wouldn't you? If the Ness sailors had had one, they would have used one too. But the way I would like to see it develop is a, is a big emphasis on training and involving younger people. Uh, and for that, I think it would be great if we could get another smaller boat, very similar to the other small boat, because that competitive edge uh, has always been a part of sailing, and that tends to bring on the young people. So. Um, a few very similar, smaller craft meeting for little regattas, I think, would do a lot to keep the skills going. We really have a long way to go. Um, we've had good involvement by volunteers in maintaining the boats. It's been a huge team effort this year. Jubilee needed two planks done, and Suler needed a complete um, paint job back to the wood, really. And um, it's a massive number of hours, especially the big boat because of its volume. Uh, and that's been a good start, good level of involvement, but we need to get more young people involved. And um, this week has been a good week. This is the way to go, have the boat seen and show people the pleasure of sailing them, really. Okay, down. Oh!